Hey, I'm Reed. This is Brad. Hi. And we're here to talk today about uh, some terms. So imagine you're about to go into a meeting and talk about NetApp technology, and you don't know anything about NetApp, but you have to pretend you do. This is going to be some, some content that hopefully helps you. There's going to be nine key terms we talk about when you go to the meeting, and hopefully you feel more educated and empowered uh, to talk about NetApp technologies. So the first one we're talking about is called Snap Mirror. So Brad, what's What's Snap Mirror in a very simple? Snap Mirror is basically a way to duplicate data either, you know, within the same data center from one system to another, just as a local backup, okay. or remote to a rem remote site. Perfect. It can be synchronous or asynchronous. So Snap Mirror is asynchronous or synchronous, and it's used to move data between two NetApp systems at the same site or two separate sites. Correct. Perfect. Okay. The second we have is something called Metro Cluster, one word. So metro what's Metro Cluster, cluster all about? Okay, so Metro Cluster requires that you have um, two identical systems, same setup, same configuration, and it's synchronous, real time. So it's a cluster, all the heads work together. So say you lose a whole site, okay. you're still up and running. Okay. So what's the difference between Metro Cluster and Snap Mirror? Because Snap Mirror is moving your data between one Snap site Mirror and the other. Snap Mirror is just a copy. Okay. So only one site's running at a time. Gotcha. So with Metro Cluster, you have both systems working active, active. Yes. But you have to have the same Every, two. Everything files. has to be identical, on tap version, everything. The OS. Okay. The, the disks have to be identical. Um, everything. Everything. Okay, that's a good one to know. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about Metro Cluster, you better make sure you have the exact same system on the other side. Okay. Uh, go to another one. It's called Snap Vault. What's Snap Vault all about? Okay, so Snap Vault is taking your Snap Mirror copies and basically, you know, marking them as an archive forever. Okay. They can't be deleted. Well, they can, but go, you have to go through some trouble. To, uh, you can't accidentally delete a vault. Gotcha. It's for long-term storage of your Snap Mirror protected data. So walk me through a scenario where that might be useful. I'm using Snap Vault because I'm trying to back up my Exchange database mm -hmm. every six months to keep an email archiving. Okay, so technology. let's say you've got two sites. Um, you're running Exchange over here, and you're Snap Mirroring all your data over here. But over here, they're the same disks, expensive okay. you know, SAS disks. Gotcha. You can t use Snap Vault then to vault that data off to, you know, six terabyte SATA drives. They're much cheaper. Okay. So let's say, okay, so just to walk through Snap Vault, you've got two sites. You got one in Georgia and one in California. You're migrating data to protect it to California. Once it gets to California, you might want to create an archive copy for long term retention to another class of disk mm -hmm. using Snap Vault. Yep. You're teaching me something. Awesome. Okay. Waffle. I think I know what this is, but maybe it's not. It's not Waffle House. No. <laughs> what, what's what's Waffle? Waffle is the lowest level. It's the file system. Okay. And it stands for Write Anywhere File Layout, okay. which basically means within an aggregate. We'll talk about that later. But within the aggregate, um, you want to write a file. It's going to put it wherever it wants. The OS will. Gotcha. And that's what makes NetApp so efficient. Okay. So if I have a file, it's not just going to write it to this one drive. It's going to write it all over the place yep. simultaneously so that you have better write performance. Correct. Will it also impact read performance yep. too? Definitely, for sure, because the more, you know, the more spindles, um, the faster you have uh, you performance. Know, access. Okay, cool. That makes sense. So what is on command? One word, on command. On command is NetApp's suite of software um, that replaced Filer View, and it basically it controls all your filer heads within a site or multiple sites. Okay. So nowadays, rather than go on a command line on a particular filer and set up a aggregate and volume, et cetera, um, you go to one, you know, a single pane of glass. One GUI. Gotcha. And you can see all your disks, all your volumes, and if it's, you need to grow a volume, you do it there if you need to create a new one. Gotcha. So typically, are people going to use on command even if they'll have 
only have one filer or one system? Or are they going to use it typically in an environment where they have multiple systems or both? Since filer view is, is obsolete now, you on command your only option. Gotcha. So you're going to use it whether you have one, one filer uh, cluster or 30. Okay. So the next word, which kind of goes in that, is, is on tap. So data on tap. Data on tap is the? That's the operating system. Okay. So it's the Windows for filers, let's say. Gotcha. So just so I understand the difference between on tap and on command, on tap is the operating system. Mm -hmm. And then you've got on command, which allows you to manipulate the OS or access the OS. Sure. Is that how you would say that? You could say it that way. Um, you wouldn't necessarily control on tap with on command because on tap is the operating system. Okay. But you control all the features that uh, you know run on on tap using on command. Correct. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. So what uh, I think we you know uh, you know if you come from an EMC background, you might hear uh, maybe you would hear LUN, uh, but in in NetApp, a lot of people talk about aggregates. Right. What's an aggregate? So an aggregate is a, it's a pool of disks, basically. Um, and your volumes live within your aggregates. Okay. So why would you want to pull a bunch of disks together? Like why do that? You have to. <laughs> I okay. Mean, so uh, go, we'll go into RAID DP. Okay. Dual, RAID dual parity. So you have to have at least three drives. Okay. You can lose two of those drives and still be up and running. Okay. Um, so to create an aggregate, you need at least three drives, um, but you can have, you know, with the newer OS, and there's no more 16 terabyte, terabyte bar barrier. Okay. You, depending on the model, you could have a petabyte volume if you want it. So why would you have multiple aggregates on one filer? What would that allow you to do versus just one? You may beat uh, performance. Okay. Depending on the app that's running on one particular volume. Okay. Um, you may have a heavy, heavy hitting, uh, say, Outlook or whatever, Exchange. Um, Oracle. Oracle, sure. Yeah, you, you, you want them to have their own aggregate. So the, the, you typically. So that they don't affect performance of the other aggregates. Uh, so if you're running like VDI. Right. Or you're running some kind of large VMware workload or maybe a large Oracle workload. Even if it's just to for your own sanity to keep things organized. Okay. So aggregate is a collection of drives is dedicated to an app or multiple apps, depending sure. sort of on the performance profile. All depends on what you want to do. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, so we've got a type, I guess this is a type of operating system. It's called seven mode. What's seven mode? Seven mode is the older um, opera, uh, on tap version from that app. It's still supported. It's not supported on the 8000 series. It is on the 2500 series, but uh, it's still supported on all, all the older filers. Um, but they're phasing it out. It, it's going to go away eventually. So, why? So, they're phasing out 7 mode. So, 7 mode is the older operating system, which a lot of people have, mm -hmm. but they're moving to something called cluster data on tap. Right. So why are they doing that, and what is clustered data on tap? They're doing that because uh, with seven mode, you can only have two controllers. Okay. So with cluster mode, you can have, depending on the model, you can have up to 16 heads in a single single cluster. And what that lets you do is, you know, say you have a hardware problem with one head, and you've got, you know, six heads in your cluster. You got yank. Well, a whole head out, fix it, put it back, you know, nothing goes down. So is it more, so is uh, cluster day on tap more about a performance, sol a solution to a performance problem? Or it's performance availability? and availability, both. Gotcha. And when you have a C dot or cluster data on tap, is it typically all the same filers within the cluster, or can you use different filers within the same cluster? That's a good question that I don't know the answer to. <laughs> Neither. Well, we'll answer that one on the next one. But uh, hopefully, this has been this will help you out if you're going into a meeting talking about NetApp technology. You're going to hear some of these terms, and you'll be kind of educated in advance and prepared. Uh, and we'll talk about what kind of filers you could put inside of the cluster on all the right. next one. So thanks for watching.